Hi everyone. So <clears throat> welcome back to this series of uh, booklet solutions. Now, in this particular uh, video, we have uh, booklet solutions or uh, video explanations of the following questions, as you can see on the screen. Now, the topics that are covered in this particular video are, uh, you know, ranging from the start of the chapter to the quantum mechanical model or the beginning of the quantum mechanical model. So in the FBO section, you have primarily uh, quantum mechanical model related questions. However, in get equipped to means and get equipped to advanced, you have questions ranging from various topics. So let's proceed one by one and uh, answer these questions. Now, the starting few questions that are there, they are uh, based on the quantum mechanical model only, right? And the basic formulas that are used in those uh, uh, or, or the results that are there from the quantum mechanical model. So 60 second question talks about the ang orbital angular momentum and we have a simple formula for it. Now you have been asked for the 4D orbital. So the value of D, uh, so the value of L for D orbital is uh, two. So just use that value for D orbital. L is equal to 2. Now, 63rd question, simple question based on de Broglie wavelength. I don't think you will have any doubt in this. 64th question is, an, is another easy question. Um, you know, for n equal to 3, L cannot be 3. It has to be between 0 to n minus 1. Right. So three up will not exist. Then <clears throat> as I have spoken about uh, quantum numbers, I told you that the first three quantum numbers like N, L and ML, they come from the Schrodinger equation. The fourth quantum number is not a solution from the Schrodinger equation. 66th question again uses, is the uses the same formula of uh, orbital angular momentum. Then uh, 67th question is straightforward. 69th question is, yeah, I can tell that, okay, this is a decent question, but we have discussed this in class as well. Like when we focused about the counting of number of orbitals in a shell, right? So yeah, n equal to one may ek, n equal to two may four, n equal to three may, when you do the counting, you have nine orbitals. So the trend that comes out is that uh, for a given shell n, there are n square orbitals right and similarly for a given subshell l there will be 2l plus 1 orbitals right so if you have 2l plus 1 orbitals for a given shell then you can uh, uh, get the counting of the total number of uh, electrons in a subshell as two times 2l plus 1 and right? this is not something that uh, uh, might have been covered yet, but within an orbital, there can be only two electrons, a maximum of two electrons. We'll talk about it in the upcoming lecture also. So if in a given subshell, you can have uh, two times 2L plus one electrons, and then the L value goes from zero to N minus one. So you substitute those values of L and uh, do the calculation for all the subshells within a shell all right then 70th question it sounds a bit uh, tricky to start with but is a straightforward question in this you understand that uh, uh, you know this part of uh, interference and diffraction they are wave properties whereas e is equal to mc square is uh, mass energy equivalence as given by einstein it is e is equal to h nu which uh, relates the particle as well as the wave nature. The particle nature comes in the form of photon and the wave nature comes in form of frequency or wavelength. And then 71 may, we can't say 100% probability, it is not allowed as per the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. So the correct answer will be 90 to 95% probability only. 77th, so 72nd uh, is a straightforward, 74th is straightforward question. 75 is also straightforward question. These are based on the notes and the uh, definitions of quantum numbers. 
76 and uh, 77 yeah uh, based on the allowed values of uh, quantum numbers so when you will study the nodes and you will read the allowed values you will understand that for l equal to 1 m can be minus l2 plus l only similarly for n equal to 3 l can be from 0 to n minus 1 so the options which have these are not the correct ones then for 78th question uh, you have to uh, give the order of relative order of energy of orbitals so since it is mentioned a multi electron system you apply the n plus l rule that we studied in class the orbital for which n plus l value is uh, lower has lower energy then 79th question is based on the diagram of orbitals so if you remember the visualization of uh, pz and uh, d x square minus y square orbital you will find out that their probability or their lobes are between are along the axis okay so pz is along the z axis and d x square minus y square is along the x axis and y axis so the probability of finding electron is distributed along the axis rather than between the axis all right then 80th question again the same n plus l rule has to be applied to do the calculation of the relative order of energy then uh, as we discussed some time back the number of orbitals present for a given subshell is 12 plus 1 for g subshell l value is 4 so you substitute that over here and get the answer all right now let's talk about the questions from the get equipped to main section uh, as i said the questions are going to vary from different different topics or sub topics um fifth question is straight forward based on the simple formula i don't think it will be a challenge for anyone 16th question is again based on the allowed values of quantum numbers so for l equal to 2 ml cannot be 3 25th is uh, again a simple straight forward question based on the formula of the orbital angular momentum so is 27th direct formula application same with 28th and with the <clears throat> the 30 ninth question 39th question maybe it is asking about non directional non directional means that uh, there is no dependence on angles right so it is s orbital which is spherically symmetrical will have a probability distribution uniform in all angles all right then let's talk about get equipped to advanced again uh, <clears throat> single choice correct questions uh, are being discussed here so the first question it talks about the series limit of partition series so if you remember series limit is the last line of a series so partition series ka last line will be from n equal to infinity to n equal to 3 you substitute in the formula of either the redberg constant or you can use uh, the delta e wala formula equal to hc by lambda which can be written as 1 to 4 00 by lambda in angstrom if the delta e is in electron volts you get the correct answer then uh, second question is something similar to fbo questions that we have discussed uh, many times before time period is something which is uh, equal to 2 pi r by v and r and v are proportional to n and z in the following manner so if you substitute them over here you will get the proportionality of time period in terms of n and z third question yeah it's a difficult question to uh, you know solve mathematically because all you will end up with are two variables and just one equation right if you try to solve it via the traditional method in which you will write the delta e is equal to 13.6 into z square into a hydrogen atom to mera z square ko bane dikha 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square so you will be left with two variables and just one equation so it is better if you remember the energy levels of hydrogen atom you will be able to quickly figure out and tell which energy gap does this 2.55 correspond to then fifth question yeah it's a good question it's a combination of uh, photoelectric effect and de broglie wavelength in which uh, uh, it has been mentioned that uh, the language of the question is kind of uh, uh, you know not easy to grasp but yahan par aap observe karna what is happening is that the electron uh, in a hydrogen atom is uh, absorbing photon and escaping out of the atom right how much energy it is absorbing it is said it is absorbing 1.5 time, times its ionization energy right so ionization energy of uh, hydrogen atom that is the work function is 13.6 eV so the energy of photon absorbed will be 1.5 times that it is based on this you can calculate 
by using the law of conservation of energy, the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, and then you can use it to calculate its de Broglie wavelength. All right, sixth question, straightforward. Just apply the formula, get the answer. Seventh question sometimes uh, is a, a question that students raise a doubt with, saying that the rest mass of photon is zero, which is the correct thing, that rest, the rest mass of photon is zero, but the mass inquired in this question is not the rest mass. It is something which is as per the mass energy equivalence. So either you can use E is equal to mc square, and that energy of photon is hc by lambda, and get the answer of m is hc by lambda, or you can use the de Broglie relationship also. That is absolutely fine. That lambda is equal to h upon momentum. And momentum for a photon will be mass into its speed. And speed of uh, photons, speed of light is c. So you can get or use either the relationship to get the answer. Right. <clears throat> and lambda value, of course, you can then calculate from the knowledge of atomic spectrum and substitute in these equations. All right. Then the eighth question, it talks about the uh, you know, transition which this energy gap corresponds to. So similarly, last uh, similar to the question that we did some time back, that you got the answer of energy gap as 2.55 EV. Now, if you again try to answer it mathematically, saying that this is 13.6 into 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square, you will be again stuck because of the two variables. So if you remember the energy levels, you can uh, write away tell that this 2.5 uh, 5, 5 EV would correspond to the energy gap between N2 and N4 in hydrogen atom. All right, then the ninth question, it is again something which is a uh, uh, simple uh, application of the formula that we remember from the Bose model of atom. Tenth question, again, uh, simple photoelectric effect equation, just take care of the units. That is the only catch in the question. If you are solving, uh, solve throughout in the units of SI units or in the units of EV, if you want to use the simplified formulas. Then 11th question, it might sound a little uh, tricky to work with, but once you draw the diagram for these D excitations, you will realize that this energy gap between infinity and uh, N1 is actually a sum of these two, infinity to N2 and then N2 to N1. So you can write the delta E as Hc by lambda and then find the relationship between them. All right. Twelfth question is a class example only. We have uh, discussed this in class also that, um, you know, an, an electron is at rest and it is accelerated by 100 volts first. So if it is accelerated by 100 volts, its change in kinetic energy, delta Ke, becomes plus 100 volt. Plus 100 by because it is accelerated. So as a result, if initial kinetic energy was zero, its final kinetic energy will become 100 EV. And based on that, you can get the de Broglie wavelength as lambda is equal to root 150 by kinetic energy in electron volts. Then it is retarded. Okay, accelerate here, here retard. What is retard? Negative sign ke mein delta ke aega. And the kinetic energy will decrease. So you found out you got the initial kinetic energy as 100 and you got that it decreased by 19 EV. So you got the final kinetic energy and then you calculated its de Broglie wavelength. Then again, it was retarded. So as a result, the change in kinetic energy was 32 EV. And uh, as a result, you got the final kinetic energy and the final de Broglie wavelength. So you got the values of lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. You substituted in the expression that you wanted to calculate and get the answer. All right, then 15th question. This is a straightforward question asking about the uh, you know, uh, transition helium plus, which will have the same wavelength as that of the first line in the Balmer series of hydrogen atom. So hydrogen atom ki Balmer series ka apne expression likha. Okay. Now, what you do is that you multiply and divide the right hand side by two square. Right. So what it does is that this two square goes ahead and takes the place of Z. And uh, the denominator ka 2 square goes ahead and inside and talks about the transition or uh, ta talks about the energy levels or orbit numbers between which the transition can happen. So this formula maps that the formula of uh, helium plus having a transition between 4 to 6. All right. 16th question is a straightforward question from uh, or a result from Bose model of atom that the potential energy is minus 2 times kinetic energy. 17th question is also straightforward, just that uh, you have to convert the kinetic energy from Joule to EV to get the answer in angstrom. Then 19th question, this is something that we discussed just some time back, that for a given subshell, the number of orbitals is 2L plus 1. 
then 20th question it is similar to the fbo questions of the bohr's model that we used to do the ratio of energy since energy is proportional to z square by n square so we take the two case and take the ratio of the z square by n square respectively all right then 21st question uh, it is uh, the same transition that we are talking about so the wavelength uh, you know the energy gap is going to be directly proportional to the uh, you know z square value okay so the wavelength will be inversely proportional to the z square value okay all right 22nd question uh, simple question just reading the transitions for the first line of bomber series and uh, changing it for uh, from hydrogen to lithium the only thing that changes is the z value so you can take the ratio these uh, values easily cancel out and you get that the wave number is 9 times that of hydrogen all right 23 is something again similar to our class example that we have done before so you write two equations and uh, solve for them in the first case right in the first case you have uh, h nu 1 as the energy of photon and it uh, uh, gives a electron of kinetic energy k1 and in the second case you have a photon of energy h nu 2 which gives a kinetic energy of electron as k times that of the previous so using these two equations you can uh, do some manipulation and get the value of nu not okay abhi jo manipulation and this is the mathematical part which you can easily decipher once you have the two equations in front of you all right then the 24th question it um, is based on the formula from bohr's model of atom that radius is directly proportional to n square right so you substitute that over here and uh, you can solve for the value of n then uh, in the 25th question acceleration is uh, angular acceleration is proportional to v square by r this is what is being used here and since v is directly proportional to z by n and r is proportional to n square by z we use both of them here to get the proportionality of acceleration 27th is a straight forward formula substitution 34th is also the same de broglie wavelength ka formula just different different versions of it so this time because mass and uh, the potential through which they are accelerated are uh, same so you know, what varies is the charge on the particle right. so i think this should suffice uh, and help you to solve these uh, questions which were pretty simple straight forward right thank you guys